What's going on guys? Welcome to the 46 Xamarin Android tutorial. So in this video, we're going to continue working on the toolbar, okay? So the last video, we took the toolbar and we made it an action bar and inflated everything and it acted like an action bar. Now, if you look down here, we have another toolbar that actually isn't the action bar. It is its own standalone widget and I just happened to put it down here at the bottom, okay? So it is actually its own view and this is going to be another demonstration of how the toolbar has a lot more flexibility than the action bar by one of the reasons by being able to move anywhere on the screen just like any other view group okay so in this video we're going to be we're going to be uh, working on how to get this going and even how to set up some click events to to listen in on any of these things okay so let's get started guys and we're going to start off um from the last video so if you haven't watched that one, go go back one video and I start from scratch with a blank blank application and I build the toolbar. So I'm starting off with, from the previous one. So if you uh, haven't, haven't done that one, go back one and catch up with us. So now the first thing that we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to create uh, the actual toolbar, okay? Because remember the toolbar is just another view. So now that we need to, what we need to do is we need to come into our main, all right? And then when in here was where we actually created our toolbar that we set as the action bar, okay? So now it's gonna be a little different though. We're actually going to create another toolbar, but it's going to be its own, its own thing, okay? So the easiest way is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a relative layout, okay? Because I want this to be the parent of both the toolbars, okay? So I'm gonna take this namespacing stuff and put it on the new parent. And then of course, I'm gonna give the parent a width and a height, which I'm just gonna set to match parent for both width and height. And then I'm just gonna set the background color to something pretty light. Okay. So now that we have now that we have that, we can take the action bar. Okay, so remember this is a toolbar that we set as the action bar, and then we can create another action bar. Okay, so this is going to be our second one. Okay, and let's go ahead and give it a ID, and we'll call it standalone underscore toolbar. Okay, so actually this is going to be a toolbar, and now we're not going to set this one as the action bar. Okay, so down here we want to set the background color. Let's give it a different color. Okay. So we can further customize this and just give it another color just like every other view, okay? And we can leave the theme as the, the way it is. And then what we can do is we can come back over here and we don't see it on here, okay? So it, they're overlaying each other actually. So what's gonna happen is we need to actually give them, because we're in a relative layout now, we need to give it some, some positioning values, okay? So no problem. What we need to do on this one, we'll do layout and then we'll do align parent top and we'll equal that to true okay so that the, the top one will go to the top it'll stay at the top just like it normally was and this new toolbar we're going to do a line parent bottom and we can do this and remember because we're in a relative layout so now this is the bot the top as well just like it normally was and then this one is actually at the bottom now so that is the look that we're going for okay and then the next thing we're gonna do, the last thing with this layout is we're just gonna make a simple text view, okay? And the text view is gonna have a width and we'll give it a wrap content. And then we'll give it a high also wrap content. And then let's give it some text. I believe the text said two toolbars. Hooray, and we'll make the text color black. And we will up it up a little bit in size to 20. And then lastly, we're gonna set this exactly in the middle of the relative layout. Okay, so we'll do center and parent equals true. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so that's the effect that we want, all right? So we have a action bar, a toolbar that's acting like an action bar, a, a text view, and then another toolbar that we have lined at the bottom, and that's gonna act like our toolbox or something like that, okay? 
So the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create the actual menu. Okay. So remember this menu is for the action bar. So we're going to need to create another menu that's going to act like the to inflate the icons on the new toolbar. Okay. So let's do new item XML and we will call it toolbox underscore menu. Okay. Alrighty. So now that we have that, what we can do is I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this over since we've gone over this before. And all this is doing is basically making a menu, nothing different from what we do when we do an action bar and we have a namespace and I named it my app. And then you got to do this here, my app, when you do show as action always, otherwise they won't show up. And this is of course, again, for the support library. Okay. Which we are using the support library, the support toolbar in the support library. So that's going to be, um, the reason why we're using this namespace. So just make sure you set that here and then use it here in these, in this show action attribute. Okay guys. So now that we have that, we actually need to import these icons. So we have action favorite action edit. So I have the action bar icon that you can just download the package that you can download from the developer from Google's site. So go ahead and do that. Now, if you don't have them yet, I'm just going to bring them into my drawable folder and I'll pause the video since uh, this is pretty trivial and I don't want to waste your guys time. Okay. So they have been added here. I have them in my drawable folder so that then I can reference them here and um, it'll pull it from the drawables. So now what I can do is uh, go ahead and close this, save it. And then now let's come back into the main activity and start coding up some uh, to, to create the toolbar. Okay. So do you know what the first thing I'm going to do though, is I'm going to actually come in here and what I'm going to do is that's something that's pretty handy that you can do in C sharp. Now I'm going to create an alias. Okay. So I'm going to call it support toolbar. Okay. Because sometimes it gets a little tricky of whether you're using the actual support library toolbar or the normal toolbar. Okay. And we, we of course want to use the support library toolbar. So in order to, to make sure that we are doing that, we're going to give it an alias. Okay. So we're basically taking this class toolbar and we're naming it support toolbar. Okay. So then now what we can do with our existing is just simply replace it with that. And it knows that we're talking about this. Okay. So it's going to just give us some shorthand. So we don't have to keep on specifying it verbatim and then, or when now we don't have to worry about messing up and accidentally referencing the, the main toolbar. Okay. So we'll just call it stand alone toolbar. And then let's go ahead and get a reference to it. Toolbar. Okay. So now that we have, we have a reference to it, we can start doing some stuff with it. Okay. And what we want to do is we actually want to inflate the menu. Okay. So the on create options menu does this for the action bar. But if you're just having a standalone toolbar that isn't an action bar, then what we need to do is we need to manually inflate it. Okay. So that isn't too much of a problem. We'll do is do stand standalone toolbar and we'll do inflate menu. And it wants a resource ID that points to the menu. Okay. So we'll do resource menu dot toolbox underscore menu. Okay. The name that we give it to the, to our actual XML file. And then I'll take that menu, the one that we created here and it'll inflate it and put those things into our toolbar. Okay. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a tech, a menu item click listener. Okay. So this is going to listen on any clicks. Okay. So whenever something is clicked inside of an, a, a action or icon is clicked, this thing will trigger, which we can just, and then we can tell which one is being clicked on just the same when they, way that we do on options item selected for an action bar. Okay. We'll just do a common switch case and then we'll get the ID of the item that was clicked. And then we'll simply just do a case for each one. Okay. So then we'll do case resource ID and then we'll do action edit break and then and so on. Okay. So then this action edit, remember guys is coming from here. Okay. So this is action edit. So The next one we'll do action favorite action new action paste. Okay. So it's grabbing this ID 
and then we check to see which one was clicked based on that ID. Okay. So just to verify that, we'll just call out a little, oops, I might be uh, in Java mode right now. And we'll just do edit. Okay, we'll just call it edit. Call out edit so that we know, okay, that it is indeed working. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this guy and let's see that everything should build fine and we should have another toolbar down here at the bottom. And this is just another way to to customize something. So now, like say if we want, you know, like a full on toolbox, like you're making an, a, a editing application or, or you just want some more options for your users to be able to to use and not just have the, the action bar that's just crowded or maybe you don't want an action bar on top. So you just get rid of that one and then you make the toolbar on the bottom and inflate all those menus down there. So there's really some a lot of options that we can we can do now as developers with this new toolbar. So here we go. Here we here we have it. We have our text view. We have our normal action bar, and then we have our extra toolbar down here. Okay. So if we click this, we can see that it is indeed firing the event, and our edit system, our console out is being called. So we know that that is working. We just need to we just need to add some click events here if you guys want, and then. You'll be able to uh, handle any kind of event here and do any kind of more more coding inside of that okay so that's basically it guys that, that's the way to create a standalone toolbar and then as you see you just position it however you want wherever you want just like you would a normal text view or something and then inflate the menu inflate the menu the one that you created inside of your menu just like you would an action bar and then handle the clicks and another event okay which you do the same, which the same thing as switch case inside of here will suffice. Okay. So that's another, that's, that's another way to customize your toolbar. And the next video, what we're going to be doing is working with the toolbar a little more, and we're actually going to be putting our own stuff in it. Okay. So like we're actually going to be putting buttons and we can put a text view. We can, we can put some more stuff and like, as if you were, were putting something into a linear layout, we can actually put a linear layout inside of this and then start putting buttons and a whole bunch of other stuff and it to even customize it even more. That way we're not restricted with just the action bar icons, but we can put our own icons, our own, own, our own whatever, okay? So that's gonna be in the next video and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But hopefully this will get you on the right track of being able to create your own menu and then handle click events and put your toolbar wherever you like on the screen. Okay, thanks guys.